My name is Elva Helgadóttir and I'm from Reykjavík, Iceland. I think I knew when I was around 12 or 13. I was bent on that career from a very young age. Obviously it takes some turns when you hit the 16, 17, 18 and then life kind of threw me back on the right track. So copper is the Icelandic translation for copper. So copper is the oldest metal and obviously it's a very uh, common metal in kitchens. It's used in the copper pots and because it's so good with heat. When we opened there were a lot of restaurants in town that drew their name from what kind of uh, cuisine they were serving. So we had the fish company, the seafood grill, the fish market, steakhouses and we really wanted to distinguish ourselves because we were here down by the harbor and also by the largest ship repairment in Reykjavik. So we found the connection there from food to the environment, to our area, to the harbor with copper. 16th of May 2013 is the first day that we serve food. At four o'clock that day, there still weren't any tables in here. They were still cleaning the floors. The glasses were probably not even in the vicinity. <laughs> Which is funny how everything kind of comes together on the last day when you open a restaurant. I've been lucky. You kind of see this, the transformation, it goes faster every day. And then you know, during the last two, three days, everything is just going crazy because you can see the changes fast. We chefs, we get a kick out of uh, bringing people something to eat that they love, you know, to see the reaction. So for me, it's very important to have the open kitchen. Sometimes, if, I, if it's not too busy, maybe at the start of the night, after I send out the plates, I just watch. I try to like not be too obvious, though, and I just watch as they take their first bite and just to see the reaction on their face makes it all worth it. Obviously, the heritage is very much about how to store food. So, uh, salting, smoking, and even the, you want it to like rot and ferment because that's a way of, of keeping it. That's really affected the food we eat and our food culture. When more access to various products, both from abroad and just fishing and everything became more available to everyone, then this kind of food sort of was considered lame and you know, People didn't eat it. And then today it's becoming fashionable again. I can see the trends. And I think that's probably the thing that shaped our food cuisine the most. How, the, how they needed to think about, like, I have this fish. And uh, it's too much to eat now, but I'm going to be hungry in a few months. And it's going to be bad. So how, they didn't have freezers, you know? So how am I going to keep it? And they had some brilliant solutions, so it's good. I think it's very important to get the reaction from people who are eating it. When we have a new menu, I try to gather as much information from the waiters as to how the guests responded. Obviously, I try to taste it myself. You know, many people are fixed on they need to do something, they, they decided to do it, so they're just going to have to do it. But I feel kind of a quality in me that uh, if I can feel it's not working, even though I made the decision it's probably on the menu or something and it's not working out, then I just change it. It's just not working out. Because it's a small restaurant and there isn't like a billion people you need to talk to in office and whatever to, to change a menu or to get some decision through, it's just me. <laughs> so it's easy. I'm lucky.
you know, it's very hostile towards like family life. You know, the hours are very terrible and this this stress obviously, but that that can be you know dealt with in different me by different means. You can't change that fact that people like to go out for dinner on Friday night, which is the time most most of your friends or family are having a gathering. So you're kind of can't, you know, escape the fact that you're going to miss a lot of social activity. Our generation is very gender focused, uh, extremely to the point that I, sometimes I think we could stay, take a step back because after all, we are, you know, very similar. Okay. Just being in the chef industry, the business, is not a lot of women. Did it have an effect? Did it make a difference? I don't know. You know, there was some attention drawn to it. And being in this industry where male is dominant in both areas, obviously I'm extremely proud to be able to do it. Many, many people go to this uh, kind of a, yeah, so I'm just like one of the guys. Or trying to be like, yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. You know, I'm, I'm a tough guy. But you should be able to be a girl with the guys standing on your own two feet doing your thing. Many people put on a mask when they are put in gender not equal situations. It's not good to have more or the other, so a good balance is fine. Unfortunately, there are so many restaurants and hospitality operations opening now that it's hard to find people. I'm very lucky to have the people I have. They have uh, been amazing with me. It's smaller things that are more important, like optimism and being on time, like looking to solve stuff instead of you know, always finding the problem. I don't have a particular like inspirational figure in the culinary industry. And I don't think I have one in particular at all. But I get very inspired by people who are successful, both men and women. When you can see, like, they have put this amount of work into what they're doing, and this is their success. And for me, that's like, yeah, exactly, you know, nothing comes easy. <laughs>to be sustainable in a way that um, at some point when I won't be able to stand here for the 17 hour long shifts that I will have found someone who can and they have my complete trust and it will, will kind of run like one of these old restaurants in town that you know they kind of just run and they're always the same they're always always great you know what to expect and um, that would be a goal for me for it to have a long life yeah